Hello! So that is going to be an ultimate mobile introduction video. We will talk about what it has inside and how to use it. So without further ado, let's get started. Once the plugin is imported into your project, you may open the services browser from the Unity top menu. So this is the main plugin hub where you can browse through the available features and configure the way they work. I'm not going to talk about some specific feature, because by the time you watch this, some of the features could be duplicated and most likely we will have a bunch of new ones. Let's just talk about general usage approach. Ultimate Mobile includes an iOS and Android native plugins and implements a wrapper around them, allowing you to have one code base for both platforms and also provides an ability to test your implementation in the editor without building to a real device. I understand that as a good developer, you want to keep your project as clean as possible. That's why all the services are disabled by default, and you can enable it only if you're going to use it. Well, except those that aren't going to add any dependencies or build size to your project. Those services are always enabled. All the services you see in this page are cross-platform. You can explore it and learn what is currently available. Let's say you need the native pop-ups. You can type native and the appropriate guide will be highlighted. If you click on it, it will redirect you to the documentation page with the use example. Also, as we can see, this feature was under the foundation service that is already enabled. It means that you don't need to do any more additional steps before starting to use this API. In most cases, before you can use the service API, you need to turn it on, like for example the social service. Some services will require some additional configuration before you can use it. Of course, all the necessary configuration steps will be described inside a getting started guide. The game service is a good example. When you click on game services section, you can see some cross-platform settings, like for example some permission config and editor API settings. You can also see that game services is based on the game kit for iOS and the play service for Android. Of course, if for example you are only targeting an iOS platform right now, you can only configure the game kit. If you click on a game kit, it will redirect you to the iOS native plugin game kit page, where you can enable it and set all the required configuration. Again, the getting started guide is there for you. Once you've finished all your configuration steps and enabled the game kit service, you can go back and see that game kit is now active under the plugin section and the game servers are currently active for an iOS platform. All the required dependencies will be included automatically into your build based on the native services configuration. You can keep track of it by using the summary tab, where you can find current requirements for iOS and Android and Unity project in general. The plugin will handle all of it on a build post-processing stage, so this is just for your information. Like I said, all the native services under the service page are cross-platform. But native plugins may have some features that doesn't have a similar functionality on another platform, like Replay Kit for iOS. That's why the Replay Kit is not listed there. But since iOS and Android native plugins are included inside the Ultimate Mobile, which means you can also use any platform specific feature, you can switch to the iOS or Android plugin view from the top bar. And this is where you can find all the platform specific native services. Here is an iOS Replay Kit, for example. The approach is the same. You can search and explore native APIs, enable and set up the services you want to use. Plugin also offers a third-party services support. Basically, this is a support for different plugins and services offered by other developers. The approach is the following. If Ultimate Mobile detects that your project contains some of the third-party plugins supported by Ultimate Mobile, then plugin will offer some extended functionality for it. The Facebook is a good example. Right now I have a clean project without any additional plugins installed and my Facebook service is off. But as soon as I will install the Facebook SDK, the Ultimate Mobile Facebook service will be activated. Which means that service is now ready for use. You can go inside to find an additional settings and guides of how to use an extended Facebook API. Since Ultimate Mobile API is cross-platform, you can expect it to be unique but look kind of similar to the native APIs you've seen before. For example, if you will Google how to share an image on Android, you will most likely find an official Google guide with a code example that looks like this. And this is the code example if you would like to do the same using the Android native plugin. 
it's quite similar. That is what I'm trying to achieve for the native plugins. And now compare to the same implementation, but using cross-platform API. The key point is that the offered cross-platform API is a lot more simpler to use, but it also offers less features compared to the native plugins. In most cases, this is more than enough. I just want you to keep in mind that since all the native plugins are also included inside the Ultimate Mobile, you can always use them directly if you need, or use some combination with cross-platform and native API. Like for example, you can use cross-platform in apps implementation, but on Android you can also implement a license check that is part of the Android Wendin API, but does not exist on iOS and not available via cross-platform API. All right, so that was a base plugin description. I will be covering more of its features in the upcoming video, but I hope this one will help you to get started with the product quicker or decide if that is the right tool for a project.